hi, hello, and all that good stuff. My name is Allie, and I am the Chaotic Reader. Hey guys, so I'm here to do my August TBR, which is also my Draconathon TBR. I am so excited for Draconathon, guys. Dragons are the shit. Everyone knows this. If you don't like dragons, you're wrong. That's all I have to say. Draconathon is an absolutely amazing dragon themed readathon hosted by Jade from Jaded Reader and Soleil. It is going to be such a good time. I will link everything down below. If you are at all interested, please check it out. It's just so cool and so unique and I'm just really excited. So if you hear any noises or meowing, I just got a kitten. His name is Resand because of course it is. And he is a little fluffy black kitty, but he is also a little kitten and very energetic and very noisy. So, and he lives in my library. So, you know. All right, I have some books in mind that I want to read for Draconathon, but I also have to draw puzzle pieces. So, let's go. Here's the puzzle piece bin. Okay. First piece we got is young adult. Okay. I actually don't think any of the books I was planning to read are young adult. So that means I got to find something. Okay, hold on. Okay, this one is not for any Draconathon prompt, but I am buddy reading Prince Charming by Rachel Hawkins with Christina from Looks and Books Tina. I will link her channel down below. I love her videos. They are fantastic. She also does amazing makeup and sometimes puts up makeup videos. So if you like books and you like makeup, I recommend you check out her channel. But we are buddy reading this together because we wanted to pick a romance to read this month and I'm really excited. I've never actually done a buddy read with just like one other person before that's not like a group read. So I think it's going to be really fun to read this with her. So I don't remember actually exactly what this is about or a ton of what it's about, but I do know that it's a very cute YA romance about a girl whose sister gets engaged to the Prince of Scotland and then her whole life is being scrutinized and I think they want to like turn her into a more presentable person and she falls in love with like the person trying to turn her into that or something. Either way, it sounds fun. It sounds cute. It's going to be a really fun buddy read. So I will be reading this this month. Let's get the next piece. Let's see. We've got Pretty Spine. You know, I think I know what I'm going to pick for this one. So Pretty Spine is pretty subjective, but I do think The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kong has a pretty, pretty spine. It's got just the simple text and the swirly smoke, and I think it looks really nice on my shelves. I also just really want to get to this this month and it does fulfill a prompt for Draconathon and that is prompt number one of Mizuichi, which is either to read a book with water and dragons or to read a book in Japan or for the broader term Asia. Unfortunately this doesn't take place in Japan but it is an Asian fantasy so it will fit that. I don't think there's actually any dragons in this even though it's called the Dragon Republic but it has dragon in the title so I thought it's still a pretty good fit and I just really want to get to this. So this is actually the second book to The Poppy War which is a fantastic but very intense fantasy following a girl named Rin who basically lives with some parental figures that are not very kind, don't believe in her, she doesn't want to live in this crappy neighborhood with these horrible people anymore. So she has been studying and studying and studying to take this test to get into this prestigious military academy. Really the lower class people are not supposed to be able to make it in there, but she gets an extremely high score and gets to go to this amazing academy. And then things go on from there. There's a lot more to the plot. There's a lot of issues with war and war crimes and war horrors. And there's a lot of trigger warnings that I would definitely look up. I probably couldn't even list them all here, but definitely look into the trigger warnings for the series before you pick it up. But if you think that you can handle it with the trigger warnings, I would definitely recommend it. The first book was like a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. Almost a 5 star. Maybe it's a 5 star if I reread it. I'm not sure, but I have it at like a 4.5. And, and I think this book is going to be absolutely amazing as well. I don't know what is going to happen in this book, like at all. So this should be interesting. 
All right, let's pull another puzzle piece. Give me something easy. And we have middle grade. That is super easy because I have a middle grade that I want to read this month. So for the prompt to read a middle grade, I've picked up Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. I'm really excited to get to this. I don't know a ton about it. I just got a copy really cheap and it is the book club pick for the currently reading book club. It is their first pick and I'm really excited to get to join. The currently reading book club is hosted by Allie Dunn and it's just it's gonna be a good time. The only thing I really know about this book is just a little bit from the synopsis that it's about a girl and her mother who have to leave family behind to go live in the US because things are getting too intense in Syria. And then she has to deal with this new environment, the hustle and bustle of city life, the fact that she is being labeled as Middle Eastern and the things that come with that. It sounds like it's going to be really good, maybe kind of emotional as well, but I'm really excited to get to it. This does not fit any of the prompts for Jaconathon, but that's okay. It's a middle grade. It should be a quick read. All right, let's get us another puzzle piece. Here we are, and one from the bottom here. Oh, we have a challenge, okay. We've got read 100 or more pages a day. That means I have to read every day, which I'm actually not as good at as you would think. I should be better at reading a lot of pages every day, but I'm not. So this is an interesting challenge that I have to try to do this month is read 100 pages per day. Can I do it is the question. 100 pages isn't like that much, considering that in my day, that means I have to read for like maybe an hour and a half read for that much every day right right we're gonna do this it's gonna it's gonna happen hold me to it guys like hold me to this okay I have four puzzle pieces so far and I'm definitely gonna pull another one let's grab this one here we have LGBTQIA plus representation. So for this, I'm going to be reading The Priory of the Orange Tree. Yes, my dust jacket is missing. Reese, come here. What are you meowing about? No, he's leaving. Okay. <laughs> yes, my dust jacket is missing, but uh, it kind of got eaten by my puppy, who have also eaten two books at this point. He got into a bin of stuff that he shouldn't have gotten into, and that did not end well for me. But he's just a puppy, and he's learning, so it's fine. But this is an 800 page beast of a fantasy that I am really excited to read. I don't even know how to describe what this is about because I'm pretty sure it follows a whole bunch of different storylines, but I know that there's a female female romance in here and there's dragons in here and this actually fulfills a whole bunch of prompts for Draconathon, okay? Let me go ahead and read to you the dragons for the prompts that this fulfills. Now, if I mispronounce these, I'm sorry, I would look up the pronunciations before I say them, but I'm filming using my phone, and so I can't look it up using my phone and watch it because my phone's there and I don't want to have to reset it. So if I mispronounce these, I'm sorry. But this fulfills, and let me just butcher these now. <clears throat> Kukolkan, Gasiendietha, Ayido Hoido, Idre Goch, and Akek. So that fulfills one, two, three, four, five prompts. So I only have one other prompt to fulfill. Bam! Already owning Draconathon just with this bad boy. All right, I'm gonna draw one more puzzle piece. I wanna keep it pretty simple this month because I keep slumping so I'm not gonna try and make myself do a whole bunch. Okay let me draw one final piece. We have fantasy. Perfect. So for the prompt to read a fantasy I will be reading Rage of Dragons by I think it's Evan Winters. There'll be a picture right here so that you can see the author's name. This I'm really excited to read because it is the group book for the Booked and Busy book club and so I'm really excited to read that and it also fulfills my last prompt for Draconathon which is Kihawahine. So bam! Three books fulfill all of my Draconathon prompts. 
but there are a couple other books that I might try to fit in because they have dragons in them. So if I happen to get time this month, I have a few dragon books that I'm interested in picking up that I might try to get to, but I also might not. So the first one of those is A Dash of Dragon by Heidi Lang and Katie Bartowski, which is about a girl who the restaurant she works for is going under, so she has to try to get some really exotic foods. She cooks magical beasts. I'm a little weirded out by the fact that she cooks magical beasts because if she's cooking a dragon, I don't really know how to feel about that, but uh, this seems like it could be a fun middle grade or I could just kind of be like, mm, no. So another dragon book I have on my shelves that I would be interested in reading if I have time is Serafina by Rachel Hartman. I read Tess of the Road last year and really enjoyed it, so I wanted to read this one. I think this is about a girl who like is a dragon, basically. But I know there definitely is dragons in this, so if I have a chance I'd like to read this one. And then one more middle grade with dragons in it is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I don't know where there are dragons in this, but I've heard that there are and there's like this itty bitty dragon on the cover. So I know that there is a dragon in here somewhere. I don't know if they're in the book a whole lot or just a little bit, but this is what I've heard is an atmospheric middle grade. Everyone is constantly raving about this and it's just been sitting on my shelf. So if I have time to read it, I might read this one too. I am also going to be reading Midnight Sun this month. When it comes out on the 4th, I am hosting a low-key Twilight Along as I am rereading all of the books this year. And I don't want to not mention this. So there are some issues with the Twilight books. I think we all know that. But specifically, the Native American representation in the Twilight books is a problem. And we know this because Indigenous reviewers and booktubers have said it again and again. This is bad representation. This is harmful representation. So it's not something that we can overlook. It is part of these books and it is harmful to people. So that's a problem. I still want to reread these books. I am still enjoying them, but I think that is something that needs to be looked at critically if you do reread these books or if you do read Midnight Sun to know that this is not good representation and to recognize the issues with it. I don't know what more to say on it than that. Definitely look up Indigenous booktubers who have talked about this for specific information on it. And I'm also going to link down below the website of the tribe that Stephanie Meyer took her inspiration from, I guess, and also a page to donate to them because they are trying to move buildings of theirs to higher ground so that they are not susceptible to tsunamis and flooding and such. They have actually just started on moving their school, so they've been able to do that, but there's a lot of work to go yet. So if you can, donate. That's all I'm gonna say on that. I will be reading the book, I will be talking about it, but we need to talk about the representation in it as well. This leads me into the final book I would like to get to this month, and that is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Horse. This I actually, I think, read like 10 pages of months and months ago, but like I said, it keeps slumping this year, so I just didn't end up reading it because I wasn't feeling it at the time and I didn't want to force my way through it when I knew it was a book I could probably really enjoy. But this is by an Indigenous author, so, you know, this should have good representation in it. So I'd like to read this this month as well. And also it does fulfill one of the prompts from Draconathon, even though Priory fulfills that prompt too, this would just get another prompt knocked off with a different book, but this fulfills one of the global prompts, which is to read a Native American book. So I would really like to get to this this month as well. I know I do have quite a lot of big books, but this one is a priority for me. All right, guys, that's it for my August TBR. I hope you had a good time watching it. I know I didn't draw a ton of puzzle pieces this month, and some of my stuff is just more like optiony, but I just don't want to stack a TBR up this month, especially with all these big books I'm reading, and just end up slumping again and not reading freaking anything. So hopefully this all goes well. You guys will see how the month goes. I'm hoping to do some vlogging this month and actually, you know, have vlogs for you guys. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you're most excited to read this month, what readathons you're participating in, if you've read any of these books, and if you liked them, let's have a conversation. But I will see you guys next time.